In this video, you'll learn how to sharpen an image, which is an important final editing step. You'll also learn how to save an edited photo in different formats for different uses. First, let's talk about what sharpening really means. Sharpening an image in Photoshop is similar to sharpening a kitchen knife. In both instances, you're emphasizing edges. On a knife, it's easy to identify the edge. It's the side that can cut you. In a digital image, it's the areas of high contrast where vastly different colored pixels meet, such as where a tree meets the sky, or in our case, where red roofs meet white siding, and where the lake meets the shore. To emphasize those edges, Photoshop lightens the light pixels and darkens the dark pixels. There are many ways to sharpen an image in Photoshop, though in this video we'll use the Smart Sharpen filter because it's quick and easy to use. The first step is to prepare your layers for use with Smart Filters, which we did in the previous video in this series. Since you can run multiple filters on a single Smart Object, we're all set. So choose Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. In the dialog box it opens, you see a preview of the image on the left and controls for sharpening on the right. To enlarge the preview, drag the lower right corner of the dialog box. Next, use the zoom tools beneath the image preview to set your document zoom level to 100% so you can see an accurate sharpening preview. Now click and drag within the preview box to bring an important part of the image into view. Set the preset menu to default and then adjust the sliders to your liking. The first slider we'll adjust is Radius, which tells Photoshop how many pixels on either side of the high contrast edge pixels to emphasize. You can think of this setting as sharpening width. The higher the number, the more obvious the sharpening. For the best results, keep this setting low. Next, with the amount slider at 200%, drag it slowly leftward until the sharpening looks good to you. If you see any speckled flakes appear in the image, drag the Reduce Noise slider to the right to get rid of them. When everything looks good, click OK and Photoshop sharpens the image. To reopen the filter and change its settings, double-click the filter's name in the Layers panel. To hide both the Smart Sharpen filter and the Blur filter from parts of your image, you can activate the Smart Filter Mask, which is the white thumbnail shown here, and then paint with black or gray. We did that on an adjustment layer mask in the second video in this series in order to hide part of the adjustment. To delete the filter, drag the filter's name to the trash icon at the bottom right of the Layers panel. In order to preserve your layers and filters so you can edit them in the future, be sure to save the document in Photoshop format. To do that, choose File, Save As, and from the Format or Type menu, choose Photoshop. Leave the Layers checkbox turned on and click Save. In order to share the image with other people who don't have Photoshop, to post it on the web, or submit to a printing service, you need to save it in a different format. So choose File, Save As, and this time choose JPEG from the Format or Type menu, which is a great format for a full color photograph such as the one we're working with here. Go ahead and rename the file so you don't overwrite your sample file, and click Save. In the JPEG Options dialog box, you can set the quality of the image. The higher the quality, the larger the file size. The lower the quality, the smaller the file size. I'll set the quality menu to medium, which is great for posting the image online or for emailing. If, however, the image will be printed, be sure to enter 12 into the quality field for the highest possible quality. And click OK. Of course, the techniques shown in this video series only touch the tip of the iceberg of what's possible in Photoshop. It's worth mentioning that Photoshop pairs beautifully with other Adobe apps such as the image organizing, editing, and sharing powerhouse Photoshop Lightroom, as well as mobile apps such as Adobe Mix for combining imagery into your own artistic vision and Adobe Fix for applying quick edits to your mobile photos before bringing them into Photoshop for more heavy-duty retouching. I hope you've enjoyed this video series, and I encourage you to explore the myriad tutorials in the Learn Library on Adobe.com so you can learn how to turn the image you have into the image you want.